Nice start, guys. Three to one, advancing to declining stocks, and it's held up. They start, tried selling in early on, but didn't hold up. Take a look at the sectors, uh, communication services, that new group's doing help. Big help with Twitter and Google doing well. Energy's turned around a little. Semis are doing better. These are the beaten up groups and consumer staples, healthcare, utilities, all lagging here. The earnings were overall excellent. Maybe we just hit a lucky bump today, but whether you're talking about Ford, Tesla, Comcast, Twitter, Microsoft, Citrix had a nice beat and a, a buyback on top of it. Whirlpool raised guidance. The last time they raised guidance, July of 2016. First time we've seen that in more than two years. N doesn't matter. Nobody believes this rally coming in. It was a big joke talking to the traders. Ah, oh, they're going to sell off, Bob. It'll be down by the end of the day. Nobody believes. So here's an old Wall Street game. Which way is the pain trade? Is the pain trade higher or lower? The pain trade is the trade that would give the greatest pain to the most traders. And if you look at the way the market's set up, I would vote the pain trade is higher, not lower. Why? Well, look what's going on here. The VIX is in contango. The, the cash contract is way above uh, the futures contracts. That very rarely goes on for more than a few days. A lot of put buying. Uh, we've seen dramatically oversold conditions. I mean, look at the RSI. I look at these simple two-week indicators. Uh, when you're over uh, 70, you're way overbought. When you're below 30, you're way oversold. When you're in the low teens, when 40% of the S&P is in the low teens, that, that's, that's like several standard deviations away from normal markets and historic norms. You just don't see this very often. It doesn't, it doesn't continue like that for very long. So the, the market right now is clearly telegraphing, I think we're going to get a bounce, but the market's telegraphing that there's a big problem with earnings. And I'm talking 2019 earnings. So remember what the markets are looking for. About a 10% increase in 2019 and that's what we care about we're looking into 2019 revenues about six percent these are a little squirrely but the market is telegraphing they don't believe it they think it's probably going to be about half that look at the multiple the multiple on the s p right now is 15. it was 16 and a half one month ago uh, the multiple is the price you're willing to pay for a future stream of earnings. The multiple decline is telling you they don't believe the 2019 numbers. Now, what is the real numbers? I don't know, but it's certainly half that. Maybe we're only thinking 4 or 5%, the market's saying, instead of 9 or 10%, like people are anticipating the analyst numbers are. That's a pretty significant haircut, and I think that's the problem that we've got uh, right now. Meantime, you look at the yields on some of these companies. I know you talk about 4 or 5% with the REITs and with the utilities, Ford's at 7%. AT&T is almost at 7%. Invesco, some of these other investment companies, they're up in the 6%. GM is at 5%. Look, I know Ford's got a lot of cash. Phil LeBeau's been talking about that, but these are pretty impressive numbers. These are above what the old utilities were. So just bear that in mind. Finally, you want to see what a crummy market does to the IPO business? It does this, big drop in prices. We're waiting for Yeti to open. Here it is, right behind me here, outdoor equipment. 20 million shares at 19 to 21. The, so they were trying to raise about $400 million. They're ending up with 16 million at 18, $288 million. They're raising 30% less money. That's a market condition situation. We'll see how it opens. We did it a little better over at NASDAQ. Stone uh, Company's a Brazilian payment processor. Looks like it's going to do a little better. That'll open about 1045 on the NASDAQ. We're at the highs for the day, Carl, up 225 points on the Dow.